Welcome to the Mind Fuckery podcast, which is featured in Feedspot's top 10 of emotional abuse podcasts. I'm your host, Elizabeth. In here, we explore areas that others fear to tread. We talk about the mind fuck that was your life. And we talk honestly about what happened because, beautiful soul, these honest conversations are key to creating the life you were born to live. I wrote my first book, Finding Lily, sat on a beach in Greece as my marriage was crumbling around me. My second book, The A to Z of Emotional Abuse, followed as I discovered a new language, words and phrases that I had no idea existed, but began to realize had been my reality. And my third book, Divorce Matters, has been written to support you through this process. It's an important stage of the healing. You can get the closure you need, heal the emotional wounds, And because your divorce matters are important as well, getting the information that you've been told to not ask for. And you can start to create the life you deserve to live. I'm the founder of The Divorce Sanctuary and Wound Talking. I've been a woundologist for over 20 years, working with past life wounds, clearing ancestral trauma, and working with this life wounding. And I'm on a mission to help educate as many people as I can on the effects of trauma on our lives and our children's lives and healing the wounds of our mothers and fathers. It stops here, it stops now, and it stops with us. So welcome along for the journey of a lifetime. Welcome to season two, episode 20. Do you ever regret doing something? I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, there are probably a few things that you actually regret. I do regret changing this to season two and not just continuing with week 53 but hey I've done it now I've committed to doing it it would be odd to uh, change halfway through anyway we're on episode 20 of the second season this week I was actually going to talk about and I, I might touch on this on the physicality on the damage that it does to the body and originally that was actually what I was going to do and I cha- I've changed my mind last minute I even I was writing it up last night I was looking at adrenal fatigue because in my mind there are five areas and I have touched on this I'm sure it's in various different podcasts that I've touched on when I was doing research and trying to sit to understand what had happened to me um, a lot of people were talking about it affecting them mentally and emotionally physically and spiritually and I added in financially because I'd been crushed um, financially so what I did when I was working through that I, I, I wanted to take one of those woundings or one of those areas which is the physical and that was the adrenal fatigue it's something that isn't actually acknowledged in the medical field Um, The term adrenal fatigue was actually coined in uh, 1998 by James Wilson, who's a naturopath, and I'm very, fairly sure he was a chiropractor as well, but he was in the uh, alternative medicine field, and he estimated, so the figures, I haven't found UK figures, but I found his estimate was that up to 80% of adult Americans suffered from some level of adrenal fatigue. And it could be through physical fatigue, it could be through um, emotional environmental factors or psychological stress. And it was something that I actually, maybe I'm going down that route of talking about adrenal fatigue, but it was something I did want to touch on. But being a woundologist, I want to bring in the wounds as well, because I think the wounds keep this open. The adrenals sit on top of the kidneys, they're like little triangles. Their glands and um, they produce some hormones that regulate our metabolism and they work with our immune system and blood pressure but they're their responses to stress and um, they also work with other essential areas within the body and you've got an outside which is the adrenal cortex and the inside is called the medulla this system is able to regulate or in a a perfect state it regulates how we should be normally but it is part of our survival now when I was I remember doing my anatomy and physiology I think it was it was quite a long time ago and and when I was um, studying that and taking my exams I had to write a paper Um, I selected stress because it's something that I had experienced in the workplace and that was the area that I went into stress is actually good for us it keeps us alive it keeps us feeling it keeps us on our toes but when it's prolonged it really does cause a lot of damage to the body so 
part of the survival is our fight, flight, form, freeze. And I want to say microseconds, it probably even less than that. Our survival system has, has done a 360 check on the area. It's done a body check to see where we are, what our, the state is. And it's done a threat check as well. So it's picked up that there's potential threat to our safety. It's scanned everything internally and externally. It's decided whether we've got enough energy in our body to run away, which is the flight. It's whether we've got enough energy and power to stand our ground and stand up to the threat that, that is in front of us. It works out whether we can fawn our way out of a situation, which is talking our way out of a situation or calming down a situation or whether we just collapse and we go into freeze, either freeze up or faint or do something. And then the hormones are released into our system and we react accordingly. But what happens in those situations if that doesn't get turned off, if that threat is there constantly? So if we look at a situation where you might have discovered a betrayal, you might have discovered an infidelity, you might have discovered a financial situation, or you might have discovered lies, or there's something inside you that telling you that something isn't quite right. This isn't sitting with me. My internal guidance is saying, mm, this really does not sit with me well. I have maybe experienced something before that has led me to believe, or I've seen a change in behavior in someone. And I recognize all of this. I was turning my intuition off because I was told that I was wrong and I'd got it all wrong and I was misreading a situation and I wasn't understanding it. I was then told that I had trust issues and all of the things that were wrong with me. So you've got your mind and your body fighting. I was listening to Mario Martinez's book, The Mind Body Code, and he was talking about three core wounds. Now, Originally, back, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I heard the three core wounds to be abandonment, shame, and guilt, but they're not. The last one is betrayal. And I'm just in the process of updating the A to Z uh, because I've written about it in there. So I'm just changing. I think I've, it's in there twice. I'm getting that changed. And I thought, I'm going to actually put betrayal in as a section, obviously under B, B for betrayal. And I'm just waiting with the new book has been sent to the publishing house it's now waiting it's having all its checks done so I want to get that one sorted before I move on to this one but the section's been written for a few weeks now beef of betrayal and it's that act of betraying something or being betrayed it's a violation of trust or confidence and this is an emotional pain that we experience and it's more than likely from a childhood wound. And the pain of betrayal emanates on so many different levels, as does the betrayal, um, the wound of abandonment and the wound of shame. One of the physical things that happened to me was adrenal fatigue. I actually saw a video over the weekend which triggered me to think, Do you know, what? I really would like to do something on that because it really affected me. And I didn't actually know to what extent and realize how long it affected me. I've been using a coach in Australia I can't remember how I came across her. I think I came across her through somebody else. And I started using this coach. She was actually a kinesiologist as well. She introduced me into the field of emotional abuse. I think it was narcissistic recovery at the time. And it was within weeks that I started to discover some of the things that happened to me. And it sent me on this journey down this black hole of getting caught up. And then realizing and looking at these wounds, and as I said, I've been doing wound work for a couple of decades now, working on a very deep level. And it was all coming together with these three wounds, abandonment, shame, and betrayal, and the effects it has. So you've got the cognitive dissonance that's like, you know, I'm being told one thing, 
and my body's telling me something else and my mind is trying to process these two things and it can't cope it goes into overload which then triggers all the stress hormones and I don't know whether to run away I don't know whether to fight I don't know whether to protect myself in this situation by fawning and I don't know whether to just collapse freeze happened to me a couple of times and it was the most horrific, horrific thing I've ever experienced. I was completely paralyzed, but my mind was wide awake, but I couldn't think and I couldn't control my body. So with adrenal fatigue, you've got this stress that's happening. You've got all these hormones that are being fired off and the body is taking these hormones, it's putting them into the liver and the liver is transforming them into sugar. So literally you're using this energy it's producing this energy for you it has to go somewhere the sugar then is converted into a cholesterol but not a good cholesterol and then it goes through the liver again and out into other organs that's if i've understood it correctly a lot of people coming out of these abusive relationships experience autoimmune diseases and some of the things that happen to you can be like loss of potassium and calcium within the body and also it dysregulates your breathing so you're taking in too much of co2 and not enough oxygen you lose things like vitamin d and you might experience to go along with the adrenal fatigue things like memory loss and brain fog and our cortisol the lowest point that our cortisol is being released into the body is around about two o'clock in the morning and the highest point is at eight o'clock and there seems to be a switch with this override when adrenal fatigue has has taken over that is completely flipped it's as, it's as if it's gone into a like a, a retrograde it's gone into reverse and you find yourself this is what i experienced what i was finding was i would i would get in from work about 10 o'clock at night because i work really long shifts and i would be really tired and exhausted and then i'd get to bed and then i couldn't sleep and then as I started to go to sleep, I needed to be up at eight o'clock to leave to go to work. Actually, I'd set through the alarm because I literally physically couldn't get up. But I also experienced in the afternoons, around about two o'clock, I would crave salt and sugar. And I would crash at, eight, at around about that time as well. My energy, I just really struggled to keep my eyes open. These are the physical. So we've got emotional, we've got mental, we've got physical, we've got spiritual, and we've got financial abuse. That's, those, that's what happens to us th coming through these relationships, attacked on every single level. There isn't an area of your life that is not affected. And you could put like family and friends in the spiritual, all your belief systems go in the spiritual, all the things that you held really, really close to you would go under that spiritual umbrella. And these three core wounds, abandonment, shame and betrayal can be from childhood wounds. And the abandonment is the double whammy because the abandonment is the thing that kept you in that relationship because that wounding was actually the wounding of the abuser. Their fear of abandonment was so high that they did everything to trap you in that relationship. And then when you have got nothing left for them, they emotionally drained you, physically drained you, uh, financially drained you, spiritually drained you. You have no energy. You can't think. You can't support them in any way. Boom, they're gone. They've moved on. They have found a replacement for you and off they go. They find somebody else who can give them the attention that you no longer can serve them with and they abandon you. There could be a self-abandonment there as well. And the shame and the betrayal can be self as well. You can feel shame for abandoning and betraying yourself. You can feel shame for the situation that you've been put in. You can feel shame for not doing something about the abuse. You can feel shame for so many things, so many reasons for what they've done to you and how they've treated you in front of other people. And then you've got this wound of betrayal. And again, I said this can be a self-betrayal as well as being betrayed by them. You can feel these emotions on two sides. And this whole scenario gets us questioning everything. You can't trust anyone and you can't trust yourself. 
And it's so hard to heal because with emotionally abusive relationships, you don't get the closure that you need. You don't get the full story. You get either a drip fed story or you get nothing. An emotionally healthy person would say to you, I need to give you this information. I need you to understand why I'm ending this relationship. Why for me, it's over. This has happened and I think we've grown apart. That's an emotionally healthy person. They want you to have closure. An emotionally unhealthy person doesn't. They want you to stay in their life for a reason. And that reason is to supply them with the attention that they want. And this abuse, it penetrates on so many different levels. Said your mind, your body, your emotions, mentally, physically, financially. You might find that, you know, your bank account's been drained. You might realize that you um, paying all the bills and, and sorting out all the finances, they've walked away with everything intact and it financially stable and leaving you on the brink of homelessness and everything all these woundings need healing on such a deep level and as i said you you unravel all these stories and you start to look at and realize that part of you's abandoned yourself part of you has betrayed yourself and then again there's that shame that comes in of, of being taken in by these stories believing what was going on and looking in that mirror and not recognizing that person looking back feeling dead behind the eyes because they have literally sucked the soul out of you i described it as being a shell of my former self i had nothing left of me i didn't know how to function i didn't know who i was so when i was doing some research for the section on betrayal and I was looking at Mario Martinez and he was talking about betrayal wound, uh, that wounds the heart more than it does the head. And he was saying that the healing field of loyalty opens up a portal which embodies forgiveness. Whereas anger and fear will gradually dissolve with redemption. Listen to your body. Make sure that you are nurturing it and putting the right foods into it and putting the right nutrients into it finding things that are high in vitamin D and vitamin B and vitamin C, resting when you can. I always, always say to people, treat yourself like a toddler. If you need to go and put yourself in the bath, get some Epsom salts or Himalayan bath salts. Go and um, have a bath and allow the salts within that to replenish your body system. If you need to go and rest, put yourself to bed. You need to be very, very gentle because adrenal fatigue, once it takes hold, it can cause havoc. One of the other things that I was completely unaware of, and I, I've, I've, I've put the YouTube link to the video that I was watching over the weekend, it was talking about muscles, particularly in your thighs. And that was something, probably one of the last things that I've recovered from. And I had no idea that that was linked. So start to look at maybe gentle exercise. There's no point in trying to get rid of the adrenaline that's pumping around your body by exercising because that does not work. Your body's working in an opposite way and you need to do the same thing. You need to be gentle. So if you do need to move, do it gently, whether that's something like Pilates or whether that's walking, yoga, being in contact with your body and being in touch with your body. And then the other one is wound talking, which is one of my favorite subjects and favorite things to teach people. So it's literally talking to those wounds and asking them where they come from and what they need from you. I hope this has been helpful. It is such a paralyzing time coming out of these relationships. And you can discover things when you go through. If you've got to divorce them physically, you might experience going through it all again because you're discovering other things that have been going on or parts of the puzzle are coming back together. There are so many questions. If only a maybe, maybe you'd done something differently. Maybe you, you'd said something. Maybe you hadn't done something. Perhaps you behaved in a different way. There are so many questions with the closure, you know, and then there's so many other wounds that come under the umbrellas of abandonment, shame and betrayal. You know, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Why am I not good enough? Your self-esteem has been crushed and you've been told systematically in a very gentle way. I say about, it's like Chinese water torture, this happens very gently. And they do the same, getting into your life. They very slowly take it over 
but they burst out of your life really quickly, leaving total and utter destruction. And you're left picking up the pieces. I'm sending you loads and loads of love until next time.